If you guys do need any grinding services done, man, hit up my guy Cliff2 underscore 3 on Twitter for domination, my team unlimited, or even level 40, man. Get up with my guy Cliff2 underscore 3 on Twitter. You it is good, yo. It's your boy Time back here with another video. And in this video today, guys, we're going to be going over the eight new players today that did get introduced into NBA 2K23. My team. Obviously, we see our Cade Cunningham. That's who everybody's going to be most intrigued about. The first thing I'm going to look at is the fact he does have point guard eligibility. And badge wise looks good so that's the first thing i'm going to point out for Cade. initial reaction looks good okay we're going to be going over the evo cards joe johnson Cade cutting in with trust free will who i think is very very solid new takeover reward tony parker bobo and obviously the new rookies let's start off here with a sapphire Jalen williams all the way evoed up he's got what 32 base badges it looks like here a 79 three ball 88 speed 78 lateral quickness decent interior decent perimeter Good driving dunk, speed with ball, ball handle, all is okay. My thing with this card is this, okay? Defensively, he's not great. And, and that's the one thing that I personally think going to hold him back a little bit. I don't love his release. Defensively, leaves a lot to be desired. And that's kind of my opinion on Jalen Williams. Do I think the card's going to be bad? No, I, I, I don't think he's going to be bad at all. I just think when you look at this card defensively, he is the definition of mid in my team. Johnny Davis up next, shooting guard, small forward, two Hall of Famers, 19 on silver, 7 on gold, 3 on bronze, another guy with like low 30s total badges, 83 3 ball, 80 driving dunk, decent speed ball, ball handle, 84 speed, 85 lateral quickness, good perimeter, decent enough interior, does get the Hall of Fame mini magician, slippery off ball, again though, Another guy, in my opinion, that is going to struggle that little bit on the defensive end of the court. Between Johnny Davis and Jalen Williams, I personally think Jalen Williams is quite a bit better. Now, that's not me saying I recommend either of these guys. I don't think either of these guys is going to be better than, honestly, Abaji or Benedict. But, I mean, I do prefer Jalen Williams when comparing these two cards side by side. Chen Holgram up next. A lot of people have high hopes for this card. Uh, and whatever those hopes were, just got crushed. He's only got 21 total badges. All the way Evo an 80. Okay, hold up. He's got an 83 three ball, 80 driving, standing dunk. Can't really handle the ball. 75 speed's not bad. 69 lateral quickness isn't great. Hall of Fame catch and shoot is solid. Defensively, solid enough. Not horrible. Solid enough in general. If you do give him Monty Williams, you're looking at an 83 three ball. Uh, 80 speed, which definitely helps. Interior goes up to a 92. Rebounding goes up to a 94. He becomes quite a bit better. Now, is he the best player in the game, best card in the game? No, but if he is cheap, this Chet Holgram is great if you are like a no money spent squad player. So for me, I'm a no money spent. If he is cheap at that power four position, you're not going to get much better than Chet. And the same thing goes with Bobo. I kind of already looked at Bobo and I was super impressed with the card. Why? He is 7 2, 7 7 wings. Man. Now, is he going to get mashed? Yes. Okay. That's the first thing I'm going to say. He will still to this day get mashed. But you give him Monty Williams, he's going to have a 73 speed, 84 interior, 95 defensive rebounding. Now, the big thing for him, right, is yes, you're going to maybe have to apply the rebound chase for the world. You're maybe going to have to. Uh, you know, upgrade that, you know, the interior a little bit more. But his player model is going to be ridiculous. He's going to be an absolute cheese ball in my team. His release is really, really good. It's what we've seen in the past. Bowl Bowl for budget cards, as long as he is a budget player, is going to be absolutely elite in NBA 2K23, my team. Take a reward at Tony Parker up next. First thing for TP here is the fact that he cannot dunk the ball. In a game in which dunking is the meta, Tony Parker can't dunk. Now, if you're new to my team, don't know what the take or reward is. Basically, you're going to have to grind out probably a couple hours of step, and this card is going to be free. Now, Clamp Breaker on Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame quick first step does get the Tony Parker release, which, look, all of that is fine, but defensively, he's the definition of mid. Offensively, he can't dunk. I just don't think Tony Parker is going to be worth the grind. Now, that's my opinion. You guys can do what you want to do, but trust me, I don't think he's any better than a guy like Sean Livingston. Yes, they're different players, but give me Sean Livingston. Now, for Latrell Sprewell, this is the first card I'm pretty high on. He has 38 base badges, 22 of them already on gold. Good hot spots. Let's check out the comments here. 
him, Hemothy. Yeah, Latrell Sprewell is good. Okay, 86 three ball, 90 driving dunk, decent standing dunk, 84 two ball, 86 bono, 89 speed acceleration, 90 lateral queen is good interior perimeter. Got great defensive badges in general. Can't get brick wall or post lockdown, which is, it can't get anchor, which all that stuff does hurt. I'll be the first to say that hurts, but it doesn't make or break a card. Do I love Latrell's release? No, I don't like it at all, but it's not horrible. It's not absolutely unusable or anything like that. Animation wise, it is the Evan Fournier base, which again, I don't know what it's been in past years. All I can say is, or, or I don't know what it's like this year. All I can say is when I shot around with him, he was okay. Now, he does got Michael Jordan dribble style with elite motion style. Don't know exactly what that's like. All I'm going to say is this. Don't be surprised if Diamond Latrell Sprewell is a, uh, is a top five shooting guard in my team. Don't be surprised. When this card first came out, I thought, you know, a Jason Richardson type player would be better than him. But after looking at his stats, I mean, he's the ideal shooting guard in my team. A guy that can shoot the ball, has every shooting badge in the game. Dunking the ball is absolutely elite. Defensively, can get the job done. In my opinion, he's the ideal shooting guard. Because I think he's this good, let's do the comparison. Compare him to Jalen Brown. Now, I'm not trying to start any controversy here, but compare him to Jalen Brown. Do your own research. And then come back to me and tell me who is the better overall card. Because I think it's closer than a lot of people are going to make the case for. Latrell Sprewell is absolutely him in my team. Joe Johnson up next. Six, seven, six, nine weeks. We had decent hot spots here. Five Hall of Famers. 13 on gold. Eight on silver with six on bronze. Decent badge count in there. 91 three ball. 80 driving dunk. 85 silver, 86 bono. 87 speed. Acceleration. 87 ladder quintus. Decent interior perimeter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I think Latrell Sprewell is better than a guy like Joe Johnson. Now, you guys can make the case I like Joe Johnson's release better. But outside of that, I feel like Latrell Sprewell does everything else better on the court. Joe can't even get limitless. I, 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 I'm not saying Joe Johnson is bad because he's not. But he's not as good as Latrell Sprewell, in my opinion. Last, but certainly, certainly not least, we do see our pink Diamond K Cuttingham, who I'm just going to be the first to tell you guys, this card is really good in my team. Now, okay, with all that being said, is he worth the lock-in? No, he is not. Okay, he is not worth the lock-in. But if you have already everything locked in, question then becomes, is K the best point guard in my team? Okay, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, one wingspan, which is pretty large, pretty massive. I'm surprised by the as good of an interior as he has. I did not expect that to be that high. 91 three ball, 85 driving duck, 88 three ball, 92 ball, 89 speed, 85 lateral quickness. This card is absolutely elite. I mean, I didn't expect Kate Cunningham to be good, and the card is really, really good in my team. So, I mean, if you have locked in stuff for Kate, I mean, there you go. Kind of mid? Um, not really. I mean, there's nothing mid about this card. When it comes to this card here, you're probably looking at the best point guard in the game. Now, with all that being said, I kind of want to make the uh, kind of want to tell you guys he's going to be different than John Murray. He's going to be different than Derrick Rose. He's going to be different than those types of guys. Here's what I'm going to compare him to: compare him to all the way evoed up Dyson Daniels. Defensively, here's what you got to look at: Dyson Daniels is still going to be a far superior defensive player. Now, on the offensive end, yes, Cade is going to be quite a bit better, especially shooting wise especially you know when you look at the playmaking Kate is going to be that little bit better so that's really what you're looking at defensively he's probably going to feel fairly similar to Dyson Daniels probably not going to be as good as a defensive player in general but on the offensive end he gives you that uh he gives you quite a bit more now is he going to be that primary ball handler I guess that's what we'll have to see uh and when it comes down to Kate Cuttingham uh and what he does look like did I lock in for Kate Cuttingham no do I regret it not really. I mean, when you break down the, the, the cards, is he better than John Morant? I mean, you can make the case either way. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue one way or another. They're going to do completely different things for you. But, I mean, either way, I don't think if you didn't lock in for Cade Cunningham, it's like a, a, a really big downfall. I mean, that's my opinion on things. He's good. Don't get it twisted. But is he worth all that grind, all that money? In my personal opinion, no. So how I'd rank these cards overall today... Kate Cunningham, the best card by far. And then it goes Latrose Brewell, Joe Johnson. And then I'm going to go with uh, Chet Holgram, number four, Bobo, number five, Jalen Williams, six, Johnny Davis, seven, and Tony Parker, eight. I think Tony Parker is literally the worst card we've got today. But that's going to wrap it up for our video today, guys. Hopefully, each of you guys did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. As always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.